Yeah, number 11. 11. How many electrons can share the quantum numbers n equals 3, l equals 1? All right, there, there's two ways to do this. Let me show you what I think is the best way. Okay. n equals 3, l equals 1. Which block in the periodic table is that? Um, so 1s, then 2s, 2p, then 3s, so right below that, yeah. Yeah. So which block is it? All the, the with the 3. No, it's 85. The 3, oh, yeah, 3s or 3p. N equals 3a. What does L equals 1 represent, s or p? I forget. S. What's the smallest that L could ever be? Oh, so and then L at one is one, two. So L equals zero represents S. S. And then L equals oh, oh, P. Yeah, so three P. All right. L equals zero is just a pompous way of saying the S subshell. And L equals one is just a pompous way of saying the P subshell. And L equals two is just a fancy way of saying D. So there's just two different ways to describe subshells. Either S, P, D, or F, or L equals zero, L equals one, L equals two, or L equals three. I got this one. So there's a total of six bases for electrons. Yeah, so this is telling us we're in the 3p block. And if we're in the 3p block, we know there's six columns in the 3p block, so there's six places for electrons. That, I think, is the best way to do this. Um, there's also a way where you just focus on the numbers. We can go through that if you want. That's how the, the, the TAs usually do it. But, uh, okay, I think it's good to try to solve quantum number problems as much as possible using the periodic table, because the periodic table is designed to make it easy to solve these types of problems. The big mistake people make here is that they forget the smallest L is zero, not one. So the first shell is zero. Okay. Can you spell? It's it's because L has to be n minus one, and so if n is three, L can be three. Yeah. L has to be n minus one. Um, can we do thirteen? Sure. Yeah. Just one more. So the answer for twelve is C. Yeah. Just one more thing about that. If n was three and L was three, what does it mean if L is three? L is three, then it's um F. S, S P D F. Yeah. But there is no 3f block exactly. in the periodic table. So you can use the periodic table again to answer this question. We want to know, um, you were answering it using the rules, using the fact that L is supposed to be n minus 1 or less. But you can also answer all these using yeah, the periodic only, table. It's only okay. 5, 4f and 5f. So there's 3d and then 4f and 5f. So the first p block is the second, the first d block is the third, and the first f block is the fourth. Okay. Okay. So we're looking at number. Uh, Thirty. Okay. By the way, what's another name for L equals one? L equals uh, P. One A. Right. Mm -hmm. Remember that L equals one is also called P. Okay. Now, what are the possible values of M sub L in this case? Minus one, zero, one. That makes sense so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, if you have n equals 3, l equals 1, and ml equals negative 1, what are your possible values of ms? Negative 1, negative 1 half, or one half. And that's the same over here. Well, I have a question. Oh, l. When it says that l is 1, sorry, sorry, when it says that l is 1, does that mean that it's, there's only one angular uh, node, and then there's two radial nodes? Let's work that out, too. Yeah, but actually, that's a little separate question. So let's finish question 30, and then we'll talk about the notes. Those are two separate things. Can I things. give you, a, after we do this, a similar question to this, and can you explain it in this way? As sure, well? yeah. Okay. okay. So first of all, they're basically asking how many quantum, how many electrons can have these two numbers? Well, um, I've worked out that there can be six. Now, remember that no two electrons can ever have all four quantum numbers the same. That's the Pauli exclusion principle. You can never have an atom where uh, two electrons have all four quantum numbers the same. Okay. Um, so, um, but, uh, so here, there's, so there's eight different ways that you could have n equals three and l equals one. You could have three, one, negative one, negative one half, or you could have three, one, negative one, positive one half, or you could have three, one, zero, negative one half, et cetera. Okay. But let's keep talking about this until this uh, makes sense. So this gives us one, two, three, four, five, six places that we can put electrons that would all have four separate numbers. So it'd be 
the answer would be E. That's right. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So I would recommend this type of notation for this type of problem. Write down the givens, and then you can make a kind of a tree diagram for how many numbers that you get from that. Um, Did you want to talk about the nodes on that last problem? Um, the angular and the radial nodes? Someone asked me a question about the angular and radial nodes, and I put that off. So no, but was that, was, I was right, though. Like, like, Actually, I think you were incorrect, okay. what we said. So. Can you explain that then? <laughs> sure. Or maybe I, I misheard you. But anyway, um, so... How do we figure out the total number of nodes? N minus one. So the total number of nodes here would be two, right? Right. And you know so that. that equals three, then. So that you know. So so how, and how do you figure out the number of angular nodes? L. So one angular, one radial. Oh, oh, oh! I got that. Thank you. Yeah. So that leaves us. I think that you had said two radial nodes before. But if we know the total is two, and there's one angular node, that leaves only one radial node. Okay. So I think the best way to do this is we've learned the formula for the total number of nodes, n minus one, and we've learned the formula for the number of angular nodes, l. And then if you just write this equation, radial plus angular equals total, you can always work out how many radial nodes that you have left. 